Hey, friends all over the world. I come to you with a very serious message. Very, very serious message. This happens to be Father's Day today. And I, I have to address this. I've been praying. I've been contemplating. I've been toiling. Last night, I couldn't really sleep. I was just, I mean, like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., I was just praying. And I remember part of me thought, well, maybe it's that Alani drink that I drank. They should send me a, a sponsorship package. But I was just, I was stirred in my spirit. I was stirred. And I want to have a very honest conversation with you. I want you to hear me. I don't want you to be appalled or put off by what I'm saying. I want us to have an adult, a grown, mature conversation. Not an inappropriate conversation, but a grown and mature conversation. What is going on? What, can you share this with somebody? What is going on? I would even go further to say, what in the flesh is going on? What in the flesh is going on? And I, I, I titled it that for purpose because, how can I put this? One of the things that we don't want to deal with in the church is the flesh. We don't want to deal with the flesh. We don't want to deal with the reality of the flesh, of the, the, the reality of the human condition. Now, before you jump on my bandwagon and say, or jump on my back, rather, not my bandwagon. Before you jump on my back and say, I think you're about to try to justify something. No, I'm not. Not at all. I'm not justifying sin. There's no justification for sin. There's no justification for sin. But the call to holiness that God has called the church to is a call into a violent confrontation with the flesh. I'm going to say that again. The call to holiness is a call into a violent confrontation with the flesh. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. Until we realize the extreme cost God had to pay in order to redeem us, we will not understand nor appreciate the mandate, the necessity of holiness. And I'm not, this is not big means, little use. I'm not, I'm not judging anybody. No, I'm not judging, nor am I justifying. What I'm saying is sin that indwells the flesh is a real thing that the church does not want to deal with. We don't want to, we don't even talk about sin in most churches. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about sin. We talk about how to balance your checkbook and how to fish and, and financial peace university. And, you know, we talk about marital tips and communication skills. But one thing we're not talking about is sin. We're not dealing with sin. We're not talking about 
the dangers of sin. We're not talking about the reality of sin. We're not talking about the scripture. Paul says some very interesting stuff in his Pauline epistles. And he talks about the grace of God. And um, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But but we read Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, but we ignore Ephesians 2, 1 through 4. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses. And sins. And in the title, I talk about dealing with the filth, the filth. Why do I use such a strong word? Because the flesh is filthy. Isaiah, the prophet declared that our righteousness is as filthy rags. As filthy rags. This may unnerve some people. This may cause some people to be triggered. But I have to confront this. And you have he quickened who were dead. Sin is a killer. It kills. It destroys. Sin is separation from God. But not only is it separation from God. Sin is the cancer that eats away at the fabric of the human condition. Sin is the cancer that eats away at the very fabric of the human condition. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they contracted a virus. They were infected with a disease called sin. And this disease ravages it destroys humanity and we don't want to deal with this we, we don't we don't want to deal with sin and what sin really is and we've tried to put makeup on it and we've tried to dress it up and we've tried to adorn it in a way that's palatable and acceptable to society but sin is the thing that God put on Jesus. Jesus took upon himself the sin of the world as the substitutionary sacrifice. And it was the only thing capable, capable of causing Jesus Christ, the son of God, to give up the ghost. And yet, in our society today, we toy with it, we, we play with it, we flirt with it, we flirt with it, we dance around it, we abide it, we aid and abet it, and we don't understand the curse connected to sin. In Galatians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14 and Christ has redeemed us from the curse as it is written cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree in other words Jesus became a curse for us cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree that the blessing the blessing the blessing of Abraham might come upon us and so so as believers we need to understand Holiness, the call to holiness in the body of Christ is a violent confrontation with the flesh. We must be willing to look at the flesh for what it is. It's an animal. The word sarx in Greek, when Paul the Apostle talks about walk in the spirit uh, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, the word flesh there. Sarx, it means animal appetites. It's talking about literally, that's the way the Greeks would describe the tissue of an animal. The tissue of an animal. 
the skin of an animal. This is what the Bible uses as a descriptive, not even a meta metaphor, but a descriptive term to describe the unredeemed human condition. And this Terry Shannon, uh, I like to call people out on my lives because if you don't call them out, they think they can get away with it. Name one profane word that I used in my title. Name one profane word. Either you don't have a command of the English language, which you probably don't. You don't. Or you're just a troll. Anyway, let me keep on going. So we need to understand that's what people, what's going on, you know, all the things we're seeing in the news and all the things we're seeing on television that may be unnerving for some, may be frustrating for others, may be causing dis disillusion in some. And people are saying, oh, but I thought, oh, but, but this one, and I, I just can't believe, and oh, but how about this person? And oh, my God, the truth of the matter is that the Bible says that certain things should not even be mentioned amongst the saints. That's what it says. But the truth is also, because that is not mutually exclusive to the fact that Paul talks about why, why, why sin is so dangerous and what sin does and the capacity of the depraved human condition is to participate and partner with sin. And, and this is why we need, I don't know how I can describe this, but the church needs to go back to the basics. We want to hear about uh, angels and we want to hear about Nephilim and we want to hear about intergalactic giants and all this stuff. And the church has majored in the minors and minored in the majors. We have more anecdotal content in the Christian space than we do theology and doctrine. And because there's biblical illiteracy in the church, there is an ignorance, an inherent ignorance, Hosea 4, 6, as to, hear this, an inherent ignorance as to the dangers, the dangers of the flesh. Paul, the apostle who wrote a third of the New Testament says, listen, after I preach to others, I have to actually bring my body under subjection. I have to literally fight. <laughs> I, know, I know the great teacher says, oh, it, it, Jesus paid it all. The fight's already fought. And, and that's why underneath a lot of that is so much filth. Because Paul was not suggesting that because the grace of God has come, you and I can sit on our blessed assurance and wait for the sweet by and by. No, contrarily, my friends, what Paul the Apostle was actually saying is that grace that has been extended to us through the omnibenevolence of God, you and I have been empowered, empowered to walk righteously, empowered to live holiness. Why are we empowered to live holy? Because it takes divine empowerment to do so. You can't please God without God. You can't serve God without an endowment from his spirit. And so what we need to do, we need to talk about the blood of Jesus. We need to talk about baptism in the Holy Spirit. We need to talk about repentance from sin. We need to talk about deliverance from demonic strongholds. We need to go back to 101 in the church. We have graduated into superficiality. We've graduated into superficiality as a church. And yet, when it comes to theology, most Christians are in remedial classes. They're in special education when it comes to theology. And we have graduate degrees in superficiality.
And so what we do is because there's a lack of theological understanding in the church and a lack of intelligence, to be honest, and I'm not saying that to be demeaning, but there's a lack of intelligence. We don't think things through. People are even on this feed arguing about the title of the video, ignoring the content. God is saying, I'm bringing revival, but this revival requires repentance. And this repentance requ requires confronting sin. You can't have repentance without confronting sin. And none of us are exempt from that. None of us are exempt from confronting our sin. None of us are exempt from confronting our sin. That is a prerequisite for repentance. And repentance is a prerequisite for revival. You cannot have one without the other. So as much as we say, oh, Lord, have mercy, what's going on? Revival's happening. We prayed for revival, didn't we? We said, Lord, we want revival in the house of God. Well, it judgment begins in the house of God. God has to deal with the condition of the house of God. He has to deal with the state of the house of God, the state of believers. Please, I implore you, every pastor, leader, I want to hear your comments. I don't just want to make this video and have another viral video. No, I want to hear your comments. I want to hear your comments. Please share this video and please remember Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you.